60 days ago, I did a video on Maria Gomez Perez when she went missing. Now, she has been found safe and will be heading back home to her family. She was found in Dover, Ohio on Thursday and could be coming home on Friday. She was last seen at her home on Westward Drive in Gainesville on May 29th. The Hall County Sheriff's Office had followed leads in South Carolina, Tennessee, Florida, Alabama, Texas, Illinois, and Maryland, but they all came up short. The FBI, GBI, Homeland Security, and South Carolina Law Enforcement Division assisted in this search. Maria was found at a shopping center with a 34-year-old Guatemalan native, Antonio Angustin. Investigators believe that the girl had been talking with Augustine and other adult men for a while on Facebook Messenger and other apps. Maria had indicated that she was unhappy and she would like to leave home. Authorities said that Augustine drove down to Georgia to meet Maria at her house on May 29th and that the two of them have been in Ohio ever since. They said a breakthrough in the case happened last week when Maria contacted her father on Facebook Messenger on a new account telling him that she was okay and that he should stop looking for her. Detectives were able to track the IP address used in those messages to a phone in Ohio. Four sheriff's investigators traveled to Ohio this week and spotted Maria at a city swimming pool. Augustine was arrested, and Maria was recovered after Augustine drove the two from, from the pool to a Walmart in neighboring New Philadelphia. Maria was interviewed with the assistance of a child advocacy center and an interpreter. She was also taken to a Akron Children's Hospital in Akron, Ohio for a wellness check. Augustine was being held in custody in Ohio for felony interference with custody, but has not formally been charged. Multiple felony charges are possible in this case. He is being held without bond. Augustine doesn't have any attorney who could speak for him. An extradition hearing to Georgia is likely next week with Ohio officials planning to prosecute Augustine after legal proceedings conclude in Georgia. Fisher said that federal immigration officials have placed a detainer on Augustine, indicating they could seek to deport him. But Fisher said he didn't know Augustine's immigration status. Augustine's only previous encounter with law enforcement in, in the county came in 2021 when he was cited for driving without a license and with an open container of alcohol. Maria's father said he is overjoyed with the news. He'll hug her and thank God because he made it possible. He says a nearly two month search for her has been hard, but this time, thank God, I did trust God. Father says he is grateful for the help of deputies and investigators. He's just saying that he's very grateful and he has been waiting, waiting, and waiting for this day to come. A community leader in the Gainesville area who helped organize the search and the reward says he was adamant about her safe return. We were never giving up. Number one, pray. Prayer works, you know, and I think that we are happy that the dad is happy. This is a great outcome. It's a great day to celebrate life. The young girl is being escorted back to Georgia to be reunited with her family. A $50,000 reward for her safe return was established by law enforcement and community members. Said it will not be claimed due to the nature of how they found Maria. Really glad that she was found safe and well. Up next is a clip from Nancy Grace. Let's check it out. 12-year-old Georgia girl Maria Gomez Perez vanishes from her home driveway. Now a desperate search ensues to bring Maria home. At this point, do you believe she's in danger? Well, she's 12 years old and she's been gone a week and a half, so that kind of answers your question. You know, um, I mean, she's a child and to be gone that long, that's, that's a serious issue. And, uh, you know, so there's so many possibilities of where she could be and what could have happened to her. And uh, so we're exploring every single avenue that we possibly can. But yes, I do consider her in danger, very much so. Somebody actually asked, do you think she's in danger? Yes, yes. A little 12 year old girl is taken from her home and signs take us to a 34 year old grown man. Yes. She's in danger. Why would they even ask that? I, unless it's rhetorical, I have no idea. Of course she's in danger. And that's what's happening today. Uh, you know, just from an internet-based aspect, it doesn't matter the apps. You know, we have offenders reaching out to children all the time. And a 12-year-old with an adult who's unknown, of course she's in danger. On Thursday, May 30th, 12-year-old uh, Maria Gomez Perez was reported missing to our agency. 
That report set into motion a large law enforcement and community effort to find Maria. We are all doing everything within our power to bring Maria home safe and sound. And make no mistake, the men and women of the Sheriff's Office and numerous other agencies have Maria's image burned in our hearts and into our minds. She may have come in contact with someone that, uh, that she did make contact with to leave uh, that day from her house. Uh, identifying that person and trying to find out who that is and where they went, uh, there's the key to it. They do, Nancy, and the unfortunate part is that there are at least 500,000 predators online at any time trying to talk with, form relationships with, and lure our children. At least it's based on data from the FBI. Our fellow guest, John Pizzurro, can corroborate that with me. Um, and that's the, the known amount. There are so many more that we don't know about. There's 100,000 IP addresses right now right now in the United States that are actually trading known active images with eight to 13 victims each. So those are just file sharing systems. So Titania is right. I mean, it's at least 500,000. That's right. And the other thing that we know from that FBI statistic, uh, the kids who tend to play these games are very young. And so that statistic you just heard from our guests, uh, we can add to that that 50% of the victims from that half million of those predators are between the ages of 12 to 15. So we have to be really careful with what our kids are playing. So, and part of that is blaming our youngsters uh, for being online and not understanding it doesn't matter who they're talking to, what they're doing, they are victims, they are children. And these are adult predators coming after them. Oh, I mean, absolutely, Nancy. And you forgot one part too that uh, they always claim they didn't. They didn't know she was underage. She said she was 18. Showed her pictures of different people. You know, whatever they can think of to conjure up some kind of defense. And you know, maybe I'm a little guilty of that myself when I have to defend them. But the truth is, um, th this internet crime has been skyrocketing over the past you know decade, and I don't see it getting any better. Uh, I mean, I have, you know, 11 year old myself and I have to monitor everything online that, that he does because of all the predators out there, the things that I see in the courtroom, it's, it's, it's a very frightening time and parents need to be diligent. They need to be aware of what their children are doing online because these predators will uh, just come after them unbeknownst well, to the and children. Also, it's a whole nother, a whole nother phase of criminal defense because now you have to be an internet expert and a computer tech expert. Because that's how we catch them, right? So I think uh, from a technology standpoint, it's from their screen name, from how they sign up. Look, offenders, what they'll do is they'll take steps. They'll use fake names. However, at the end of the day, they need an IP address really to get on. So I think that's where they um, uh, don't understand sometimes. You know, some offenders are a little bit more complex than others. I don't want to give away what some people can do, but you know, there are things to hide and mask your IP address, but for the most part, offenders don't understand that technology. The sophisticated ones do and will take uh, measures to do that, but a lot of times it's complacency. All you need to do is not do it once, and that's where law enforcement can use their own technology to find you. You have this little girl who has tons of time um, on her hands uh, because her dad is working in the, in the factory um, during the day, uncle is at night. And so she has a lot of time to be on the internet and um, apparently was communicating with a lot of different men on the internet, probably didn't know that they were their age or anything like that and they come and pick her up because she's just got time on her hands. And unfortunately, many of the people in the Hispanic community don't understand that there's boys and girls clubs and there, there are avenues that she could have gone to, but she's at home by herself on the internet and she's just open prey. At this point, do you believe she's in danger? Well, she's 12 years old and she's been gone a week and a half. I mean, she's a child and to be gone that long, that's, that's a serious issue. 12-year-old Georgia girl Maria Gomez Perez vanishes from her home driveway. Now a desperate search ensues to bring Maria home. I do consider her in danger, very much so. 
So our investigation has determined that Mr. Augustin drove from his home in Ohio to Gainesville and picked up Maria on Wednesday, May the 29th. They traveled back to Ohio that same day and to our knowledge uh, have been there ever since. I think we're looking at a pure predator here, uh, someone who would do something so horrific. Uh, and this isn't just about uh, possibly his carnal desire. This is about someone taking some uh, a girl, uh, a 12 year old girl from her home, from her family, from her father. Uh, and not even put thinking Gardera about um, sexual exploitation in many, many different ways. But what I'm also saying is what is so horrific about this, in addition to this person being a predator, is not even caring about the damage to this young girl emotionally and physically, but also the damage to the family and to the community. It's a very tight knit community. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Uh, and certainly, I don't want to be misunderstood here, Nancy. That is perhaps the primary, absolutely the primary reason in my mind that he's going after her. But I'm talking about not just the damage this will cause her for the rest of her life, but the dread and the fear and the anxiety and the loss to the family not knowing where their daughter is. Exactly. Yeah, the car pulled up. Um, she got in it, um, and I don't know if her expectations, we don't really know yet what her expectations were of the person who was picking her up. Um, I can't believe that a 12-year-old would want to get in a car with a 34-year-old man. So something had to be different for her, and she had to have been afraid, but she did get in the car and took off. Predators not only groom children via text now, they can use the filters that come in to Instagram and TikTok and other entities to turn them into young children in real time, both photo-based and video-based. And I have tested them, I have used them, and I have been able to interact with predators in real time, and it's stomach turning. In some cases I use TikTok because they have not only a live video filter where I take my 43 year old self and I can tweak the settings to make me look, you know, 13 to 16 years old. And so they think I'm a child. We start talking. They ask me to meet up and that's when I call law enforcement. Weeks pass and still no sign of little Maria Gomez Perez, a 12 year old Georgia girl who disappeared from her own home. Authorities began to look elsewhere, going as far as Texas and Tennessee. I hope I mean, that, that she's healthy and that she's okay. And um, we'll, we'll wait to see what the evidence brings out as far as any kind of possible defenses for this animal. But, you know, I've had people travel from California, from Europe. So forget just the 600 miles. I mean, people will do this, offenders, it doesn't matter what. You know, during COVID, we had offenders travel and they said they didn't care about COVID. They were going to offend with a, with a, a 10 or 11 year old. So this individual oh. here and he's smiling. I mean, look, I'm not the psychologist here, but I, um, you're talking about some depraved uh, pieces of humanity. Uh, the break in the case came last week when Maria contacted her father via Facebook Messenger. Uh, she had created a new Facebook page so she could reach out to him to tell him that she was okay and that she was not coming home. And she also asked him to stop looking for her. Uh, Mr. Gomez Alonzo told um, our investigators about the message and members of our special investigations unit obtained the IP address of the Facebook page and were able to find the phone number associated with that account. Well, you know, they had actually just been to a swimming pool. so exactly to your question as to how did people not notice? Well, you think about it, he could easily be, she could easily be his daughter, but they uh, located them at a shopping mall as they left the swimming pool. So it wasn't like he just happened to take her swimming that day. They had been out in the community. And I love when it said safely located, um, yes, she, she was alive. They were able to track the phone to a residence back in Dover, Ohio. 
And believing that this information was a credible lead to Maria's location, we sent four investigators from our Criminal Investigations Bureau to Dover this week. They were able to track the phone to the Dover City Swimming Pool, where they made visual contact with Maria and Mr. Augusta. Law enforcement has that ability, even with app companies, when there's something exigent, you know, you kind of bypass the actual process. Normally, it takes us a while from a law enforcement perspective to get information back. But when it's exigent and there's someone's in danger, especially in this case, uh, usually they can get that information back very quickly. When the two got into a vehicle and traveled to a nearby shopping center parking lot, our agents, along with me members of the Tuscarawas County Sheriff's Office, followed them. They recovered Maria at the scene and Mr. Augustine was arrested. Maria was taken to a local hospital for a wellness check and as I said a moment ago, she will be coming back home here to Gainesville today. 12-year-old Maria's father is desperate for answers, weeks after his daughter seemingly vanishes from their home. Then a mysterious message pops up on his Facebook page. I can't let this moment go but without imploring our parents, grandparents, and guardians to watch over their children very closely. Technology is a wonderful thing. It helped us locate Maria, but also technology can also be used for evil. It's why Maria was able to leave Gainesville with a stranger and travel nine hours away from home. So please know what your children are doing and who they're communicating with. They're our most vulnerable and our most valuable citizens, and it's our duty to take care of them. It's so heartbreaking. Uh, it's stomach turning, like I've said before. You know, not only does Bark have an app, but we also have a smartphone now. And for families who choose the Bark smartphone, you can see your child's live location in real time. And so if this family had had that, they might have been able to find her sooner. Um, not only that, not only does Bark alert you to self harm and violence, but it alerts you to predation. Our algorithm detects the nuances of adults trying to groom children, and we can alert you to those conversations before they become kidnappings and murders. Antonio Augustin, a Guatemalan national in his early 30s, has been living in Dover, Ohio for at least three years. ICE has placed a hold on Augustin, but his immigration status has not been confirmed. Um, we see this, uh, I've seen this before, uh, and this is someone uh, who would fit the profile of being a very depraved individual who doesn't care about uh, what has happened with this uh, little girl, maybe trying to put up a false front that he is innocent and they were in some sort of a consensual uh, relationship, uh, but it really does show uh, perhaps what is going on inside of this person's mind that he does not care about the welfare of this youngster. No, oh, absolutely. How can you be fine when you're 34 year old man taking a 12 year old from her father? Uh, that, that's one thing, but when you, when to his uh, the doctor's point, talking about how he's looking, uh, he, he maybe thinks in his mind that he was doing her a favor. She was unhappy at home. She didn't want to be there, and he, he took her to a better life here in Ohio, and took her to the pool, took her shopping, took her to I, a better I, life. I'm, I, I'm I'm throwing some ideas out there, and I'm not saying that he, did, that he did that favor to the father or the family or the community of Gainesville or the state of Ohio. He didn't do any of that, but uh, I'm hoping maybe that there was no nefarious activity between the two. Um, actually, he is not. He was supposed to be brought to Georgia, and but he's going to be staying in Dover, Ohio, to face charges there. Um, I know that he has been charged with rape and other um, sexual crimes um, against Maria. And I just have to question, and I, I throw this out there, but there, I do not believe that this is his first time. It couldn't be because he, he seemed to have been very smooth in getting Maria to Dover, Ohio. And you just have to ask the question, has he done this before? How many times and what happened to those children, in my opinion? Yeah, absolutely. And what they do is it's not n never one victim. Like the Butner study, for example, of people that uh, traded uh, child sexual abuse material, 50 to 85 percent of them are hands on offenders with eight to 13 victims each. So it's never just one. And basically, they learn, they get better at it. And I can't tell you the amount of offenders that we have arrested. It's never just one victim. It
Just he just today just said, you know what? I'm gonna be lucky. I'm gonna start this today. There's always a pattern, and it always happens to multiple victims.